So my name's Neil Taylor and I'm a campsite warden. I'm on my fifth year of being a warden and I'm currently working on an adult only site, not that sort of adult, with no children in um, a place called Mumby on the Lincolnshire coast in the United Kingdom. Um, and this is my third year of being on this site. So why am I doing this vlog on how to become a campsite warden? So how do you become a campsite warden? So I've done a series of vlogs over the years on uh, the role of being a campsite warden. And I recently did a video called uh, My Tiny Home about living in a caravan and that sparked a lot of interest and in people asking me how 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 do you live in a touring caravan and then I sort of said well I'm a campsite warden and a touring pitch is part of my role and so some people said well have you got any more information so I've referred them to this YouTube playlist that I've got here so if you don't know on this YouTube channel campsite warden there is a playlist all about being a campsite warden um, so how do you become a campsite warden before we go into how do you become a campsite warden you need to ask yourself why do you want to become a campsite warden and on this playlist that I've got I've got an entire vlog on why you should become a campsite warden an entire vlog on why you shouldn't become a campsite warden but in many cases it's um, it can be age related. Maybe you're going into retirement or semi-retirement. It could be you want a lifestyle change to get away from the rat race. You may want to get away from um, rented accommodation, which can cost a lot of money. You know, 600 pounds a month for a little, little, little basic flat, 1500 quid a month for a house, two and a half thousand pound a month. You may want to get rid of all of that rent money and take on a role of a campsite warden where the wage is more often than not minimum wage so don't expect any big salaries or anything like that but it's not just about the minimum wage you shouldn't really be paying for electricity so electricity bill gone you won't be paying for water so your water rates it's gone you won't be paying council tax council tax gone you should be getting free Wi-Fi if the site provides Wi-Fi gone your bill is that 25 pounds a month more than that laundry facilities should be provided so basically if you add on the extras to what you what what you get in the the, the perks of the job you've got a, a, a pitch for free so if you get a seasonal pitch, what's the average one of them now? Two, two and a half grand a year, three and a half thousand pounds a year. That's another saving. But how do you become one? So first of all, just quite literally, go onto a search engine, go onto Google, and just put in campsite warden jobs. And you'll start seeing um, a number of portals advertising current vacancies. So there's a, there's a uh, website called UK Campsites, um, which is quite popular. And then there are other portals and things like that. But also think out of the box when you're looking for work on um, your role of becoming a campsite warden to the Camping and Caravanning Club and the Motorhome and Caravan Club, the club sites have their own internal recruitment processes. So do approach the club sites and make sure that you've got an up-to-date, quite short and concise CV about what you think your personal skills are to become a campsite warden. So be sure to include your transferable skills. This isn't about qualifications or anything like that. Um, so you, 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 your life skills are, are quite often better. But 
most of the jobs that I've done, so I have worked in Northumberland, I've worked in West Wales, I've worked in South Lake District, I've worked in Somerset, and now I'm in Lincolnshire. I've tended to look at an, look at an area of the country, so just as an example, when I was working in West Wales at a campsite called Dolbrin, I sort of went to an area, I thought, you know what, I don't really know this area very well, I've never been before, it'd be nice to work here and on my days off, get out. So I approached all the campsites in that area, sent out an email with my covering CV, and I've always been off with work. So as I'm recording this now, we're coming into August 2024. And this isn't really a good time to be looking for work uh, because most campsites now should be at peak season with all the wardens in position. But vacancies do come up, wardens can leave for whatever reason, um, sites can be busier, they need an extra pair of hands. And yeah, so there is work all year round, but ideally you should be looking for work sort of Christmas, just after Christmas which is when the campsites are getting over their winter breaks and we'll be thinking about opening up in spring. Quite often a lot of them open up 1st of March. Um, so think out of the box on where you're going to potentially apply for a job. Heed some warnings here. If you're on a job portal, to say UK campsite and you're seeing jobs that are being regularly advertised all the time so there's a certain campsite and there's plenty of them and they're always advertising for staff make sure you make a note of those campsites because alarm bells should be ringing why have they not got any staff retention why are they always looking for new staff what what is wrong why, why are they always advertising so just be mindful that if you're looking at campsites and every month or every few weeks it's advertising alarm bells can ring if you do find um, a site and you manage to get through to an interview stage be sure to have questions to ask the owners because when you do the role this isn't uh, this isn't really a job where you start work at nine o'clock and you finish at four o'clock You've got to be totally flexible. Some, sometimes you'll be working late, sometimes you'll be on call, sometimes you'll be doing a, what we call a hush walk, sometimes you'll be dealing with emergencies and dramas and things like that. So flexibility is key. And also some campsites are only open for six months of the year. Some campsites are open all year round. Some open um, 1st of March until the end of October. So think to yourself, how long are you going to be looking for um, for work for? And if you take on a role of working for six months, how are you going to survive for the other six months if your sole income is going to become is, is becoming a campsite warden? It's not all glitter and it's not all rainbows. So I'm on a beautiful day at the moment. It's um, it's really really warm i'm just on a bit of a lull before this afternoon's arrivals arrive i've got a very full campsite and i'm working on a exceptionally nice site it's very different to a lot of the other sites i've worked on so your multi-skill your multi-skills and transferable skills keep them in mind so whether that be diy skills gardening skills personnel skills people skills and things like that and the role of a campsite isn't pitching somebody up and then spending the afternoon talking to people. That's part of the role when you're bringing people onto the site and saying good morning to them. When you walk around, you're doing a litter pick and you're weed killing and things like that. But the role of a campsite warden isn't just to be sat waffling and, um, and things like that. And if you've got a strong stomach, you'll be dealing with... Um, in some cases quite messy situations and blocked toilets and it can be it can be at best a little bit challenging but as I say you need to be uh, very um, varied in your mindset and very very flexible with what you're doing 
So I decided to become a campsite warden for, I, I, I won't go into full details on this vlog, but I had a health scare and it was um, a lifestyle change that I opted for and wanted. Um, and I was very lucky that my wife, Sandra, was also working full time and I was able to work away for nine months and then basically over winter for three, three or four months, go back home and do things like that. And in recent times, I've actually, well, those that follow this channel will know that I've actually sold our property where we used to live in Manchester and we've actually moved over to Lincolnshire. So this will be my, I'm almost 100% sure this will be my last term as a, as a campsite warden. But if you're thinking about becoming a campsite warden and you're a camper, a caravaner, a motorhomer, things like that, and your you've got your favorite campsite that you you often visit speak to the owners if you can actually or even the wardens and ask them oh, you know I, I, I like coming to this campsite um are the wardens changing this year because sometimes when once you get through to august september wardens will be committing for another year or not so don't don't be scared of actually approaching um fellow wardens on campsites and asking them about the employment situation and what their future plans are so I know of a couple that I don't want to go into details who fingers crossed if everything goes to plan will be replacing me here where I am and it's gonna sound a little bit big-headed and it's not big-headed but this is probably the best campsite warden job you can get um, where, currently where I'm working I have got very very lucky that for the most part I'm left to my own devices my boss is great he's, um, he, he's, he's fantastic I don't get any either I organize my days I um, get paid a fixed amount I don't work hours so sometimes you'll see me finishing early and sometimes you'll see me finishing late sometimes you'll see me doing sort of split shifts and things like that so um yeah this is an exceptional an exception job but if you want to become a campsite warden make sure you've also got some rules laid down before you very very early on because some campsites will and some campsites do exploit people so being a cleaner and you will get campsite cleaning jobs offered with a free pitch and things like that on some of these job portals being a cleaner in my opinion that is not being a campsite warden or a campsite ranger and the same as being a housekeeper is not being a campsite warden or a ranger or whatever whatever other title that you want to give so here where we are we've got a pod i'm sat next to it now so i turn over that pod so that's some housekeeping work i clean the toilets and showers every day and we've also got a cottage, a holiday cottage let. That is one day a week. And the pod is quick quick and simple. It's not a full-time job just, just turning over property as a cleaner. So be very, very careful you don't get exploited. And also, if you want to become a campsite warden, one of the, the stipulations for my role is I wanted two consecutive days off. So some campsites may want you to stay on the campsite even though it's your day off you won't be you're not allowed off the campsite or you're not allowed out in the evening because you've got to be on call and things like that so make sure you've got some ground rules <laughs> ready as i say there is on this playlist there's quite a few videos that are worth watching um about becoming a warden and the the the, the whole perils of it it can be really miserable if you're working in February as an instance and it's cold it's wet it's miserable um, it, it, it's not very glamorous work at all but as the season approaches and you hit sort of Easter and then the, 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 the May spring bank holidays the weather improves and you look at the you look at this now is we've, we've had an amazing couple of weeks where it's been dry but we've had three months well, it's just done nothing but rain, it's been cold and it's been miserable. So be prepared for inclement weather and working outside in all sorts of weather. You can't just sort of say, oh, I'm a bit cold today or I'm a bit wet, I can't go to work. 
unfortunately, getting out there in the wet and cold, it's all part of it. But as I say, if you want to become this warden, just think out of the box of, of where to look for work. I've found, personally, approaching campsites directly has worked personally for me. I did apply for a job for a very well-known, very, very large holiday company. It was um, the worst job I've ever had. <laughs> the private sites I've worked on, with the exception of one of them, um, have always been okay. What I had another dubious site owners is probably the best way to describe them. Um, very dubious. And in turn, I know of other campsite wardens who have also worked for the same um, for the same site who said the same um, so yeah basically I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this has been of some use you can comment um, below if you're able to with any questions that you have and I always try to reply back to any questions um, or comments that people make so even if you've got a very a very very silly question do ask it and I will try to um, to respond and just remember if, you, if you're able to also yeah if you want to smash the um the like button down there fantastic and subscribe to the channel if you wanted to that would be amazing for the past three years i've also been putting out a vlog a day one video a day um mostly for several months of the year about being a campsite warden and what what my role is and things like that a lot obviously some of it is, is, is private life but do do go and binge watch some some of my, my videos that oh, the, wind's, the wind's getting up some of the videos that i've put up um over the years um i've got some going right back to uh working up at hadrian's wall campsite there's a vlog on there all about my day getting up in the morning and feeding chickens and feeding ducks and all the rest of it day days uh, in the life of a campsite warden you'll find um, I've got a vlog called Moaners go and check that out where the frustration um, about people who come to campsites and moan that was very controversial you need to have thick skin you can be having um, people staying with you and they're as nice as pie we've, we've had it this year two pitches where the people have been really really nice and then they've gone off site and said really really nasty bad things and you try not to take it personal and you think you know what you're a complete and utter git for, 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 for doing that so make sure you've got thick skin and also make sure that if um, you're looking at a campsite go and check out the site reviews because that can also give you an indication of what the campsite is like to work on so if you've got a campsite it's full of bad reviews and all consistently bad reviews and the reasons um use that as a pointer do do your research um what else is there really as i say it's a, it's a complete lifestyle change. I've, I've said I'm on my fifth year of doing this now and my time has come on to actually move on and, and, and do different things. I've got a whole new life ahead. I say we've moved, in, we've moved to Lincolnshire and if I hadn't have become a campsite warden, if I hadn't have done this role and this lifestyle change, our lives, my family's life would not have changed in the dramatic day, in the, the dramatic way that it has changed in the sense that we've sold up, we've relocated and myself, my wife um, and family are heading to a brand new Lincolnshire lifestyle and a brand new, a brand new life. So if you found this of use, that would be fantastic. And as I say, it's um it's not all rainbows but you know <laughs> you can you can wear a, a high vis vest if you want um oh some sites provide uniforms some don't provide uniforms and things like that to the people that asked me to produce the video if you've watched this thank you for making the suggestion i have done very similar videos in the past and this is just a, a bit of a waffle a bit of a refresher basically basically because i've got a free half an hour i thought I'd, I'd, I'd get this done um but as i say search 
for campsite warden jobs and make sure you look at club sites if you want to work for one of the large clubs and do approach campsites directly don't expect advertisers to come up first <clears throat> and if you're a single solo warden like myself do apply for couple jobs as well because some sites may just take you on um, so I, I work as a solo warden being a couple is often easier okay enough of me waffling hope you found that of use as i say smash the like button would be fantastic subscribe down there below and um keep an eye on this playlist thanks for watching